Hey guys, it's Sky from Arthritis to Athlete here, and since we just went through the three worst foods for arthritis, I thought it's only fitting that we take it back a step and do the three best foods for arthritis. Roll the titles. <laughs> No messing around with this one. Let's get right into these three foods. So food number one is actually a category of foods and that is green leafy vegetables. This includes all types of greens like spinach, kale, bok choy, collards, arugula, and countless other greens. What makes green leafy vegetables so great for inflammation is the fact that they are packed with nutrition and antioxidants, specifically vitamins A, C, and K. These potent antioxidants help protect your body from oxidative stress from free radicals, which is a key player in arthritis and overall degeneration. These free radicals are just atoms with an unpaired valence electron. And since electrons really like to be in pairs, they'll often go and rip another electron off a nearby molecule. This often results in cellular damage. You know, they're kind of like elementary school kids when they get their colored pencils stolen and you know they get revenge. Hey, Jimmy, I know you stole my colored pencils in art class. What? Oh! Maybe not the perfect representation, but I think you get the idea. All right, moving on to food number two, we have cruciferous vegetables. Ugh, more vegetables, right? Go figure. Well, we can't get away from vegetables being some of the healthiest foods, so we might as well embrace it. Yeah, that was not as good of an idea as I thought it would be. Still worth it though. Hashtag antioxidants, bro. <laughs> That's so dumb. Anyway, cruciferous vegetables include things like broccoli, cauliflower, cabbage, Brussels sprouts, and kale. Now there's definitely some overlap between green leafy vegetables and cruciferous vegetables, but there's a specific reason I separated them. And that reason is sulforaphane. Sulforaphane is known to potentially block the inflammatory process and could even stop arthritic conditions from forming in the first place. The only thing you need to know how to do is how to cook these vegetables if you so choose to. So stick with me here, we're gonna get a little bit technical but I promise I will make it easy to understand. Now cruciferous vegetables don't actually contain sulforaphane, but they do contain a precursor compound called glucosinolates as well as an enzyme called myrosinase. It's when these two compounds mix together is when you get a chemical reaction that creates sulforaphane. Now the enzyme myrosinase is not heat stable. So the question really is, how do we cook this stuff? If you're gonna cook these veggies and you wanna get the sulforaphane out of it, what you wanna do is you wanna chop these veggies up quite finely and then leave them out for about 30 minutes before you cook them. The chopping process actually releases those two compounds to mix with each other. So once they mix, you get sulforaphane which is heat stable, and then you can cook the heck out of it. Whew, all right, hope you're still with me after that because next up is food number three, and that is sweet potatoes. Now, sweet potatoes might not have quite the antioxidant punch that other non-starchy vegetables do have, but they still have an overall great nutritional profile. But the real reason I put sweet potatoes on the list is actually for three reasons. One, they're delicious. And two, they're very unlikely to cause any type of pain. And three, they're actually a bit higher in calorie density, which makes them an overall better staple for your diet. You see, when you're following a whole foods plant-based diet, it's actually a really good idea to base your diet around some more calorie dense foods like tubers, sweet potatoes, other potatoes, as well as whole grains and legumes. And sweet potatoes fit the bill pretty well here. They're still quite nutrient dense, as well as a bit more calorie dense than other non-starchy vegetables. Not to mention that I just freaking love sweet potatoes. They've really become one of my favorite foods of all time. Anyway, I think that wraps things up here for the three best foods for joint pain and arthritis. Thank you so much for watching. As always, if you got value out of this video, please consider adding value back by leaving a like, comment, and hitting that subscribe button as well as the bell icon next to it. It really helps me out. All right, guys, with that, I'm out of here. I'll see you soon, and God bless. Oh my goodness.